All right, hello people of science. Uh, today we're gonna talk about DNA structure, uh, what it does, what it looks like, and how it replicates. So we wanna answer the question, what does DNA do, and what is the structure of DNA? So let's talk about what DNA does. And we should probably start by saying DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. You don't have to know that right now, though it's probably a good idea to know eventually. DNA has three important jobs. First off, DNA has to store information. Your eye color, your blood type, your hair color, etc., etc., etc. All those different things are stored inside the uh, parts of your DNA. I like to think of DNA as kind of like a flash drive. Uh, by itself, it doesn't really do anything. Like if you ever notice a flash drive, it, it 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 doesn't do anything. But all it does is store information and carry information. In the case of our DNA, that's carrying the information onto the next generation. Your children will get more than so many parts of you. They will literally get half of your DNA. And finally, DNA has to be very easy to copy and duplicate by the cell. If you remember when we talked about mitosis, that cell had to split into two, just pop apart there, and uh, it's necessary to be able to copy that DNA quickly. Structure of DNA. DNA molecule is two spirals wrapped around each other. Uh, the official term for a spiral is called a helix. In the case of DNA, there are two helixes or helices, so we would say that it is a double helix. The shape is sometimes referred to as a twisted ladder. You can see this kind of looks like a ladder, and if you give it a little twist right there, you kind of get roughly the shape of DNA. So sometimes DNA is referred to as the twisted ladder. Now looking more closely at the actual structure of DNA, there are essentially two parts to the DNA molecule. You have what is called a backbone, sort of like your backbone, that runs along the outside of the ladder, and then you have these green bases that I have right here labeled that are kind of sticking sideways out. So here's the backbone, and you can see the bases come off of that. More on those in just a second, but just remember we have the backbone and then the bases, kind of like your spine and your ribs, which come off of your backbone. So there's the backbone, and there's the bases. Okay, so let's talk about that backbone, that spine of DNA. So if I'm looking at the DNA molecule, I'm only looking at that red and blue part on the side. We're going to ignore the green things just for the moment. The backbone of DNA, the sides of the ladder, are made of alternating molecules of phosphate, which maybe you remember from ATP, back when we were talking about our cell energy, and sugar, and it's a specific sugar, it's a five carbon sugar called deoxyribose. It should tell you that it's a sugar by the fact that it's OSE. So I'll be representing the phosphate for the rest of this as red, and the deoxyribose, the sugar, as blue. Now that backbone of DNA is absolutely 100% identical in every single living organism on the face of the planet. If you look in pandas, people, prokaryotes, and plants, every single one of them is going to have identical DNA backbones. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, etc., etc., etc. They're all going to be the same. There's no differences. There's no changes there. There's nothing unique about that. When they're looking at your DNA trying to figure out, you know, if you are the father or mother, or that's, they usually don't do maternity testing, but when they are testing your DNA, they're not looking at the outside there because that's literally, literally to the molecule, to the atom, identical on every organism on the planet. The DNA backbone just holds it in there. The real information is held on the next part, which is our DNA bases. Here is where things get interesting. Here is where information is stored. So here's my DNA molecule. Right now I'm looking at the green part. I'm looking at those parts sticking out, the DNA bases. There are four different DNA bases that will stick out. They are A, C, T, and G, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. But we're just going to refer to them as A, C, T, and G. Those are the four letters of your DNA. Like the binary code of zeros and ones in computer code, it's the order of the A, T, C, or G that stores information. Every program that's ever been written, every video that you're even watching this through right now, at its heart, is composed of nothing more than zeros and ones. Lots and lots and lots of them, but it's the order of them that determines am I looking at a virus which is attacking my computer, or a YouTube video, or the latest video game. At its heart, it's all zeros and ones. Just like every person, every plant, every prokaryote, it's the order of that A, C, T, and G that determines all of that. Now the molecule itself, 
as you've already seen parts of it, it is composed of a repeating series of monomers. Probably you remember that before. Those building blocks called nucleotides. The nucleotide consists of three parts, which you've already seen, but I'm going to combine them. You got three parts to a nucleotide. You got that five carbon sugar called deoxyribose. You have that phosphate group attached to it like so. And finally, you have that nitrogen base. And remember, that nitrogen base is one of four types A, T, C, or G. Collectively, that phosphate, sugar, and base is called a nucleotide. Now, base pairing. When we talk about these nucleotides and you talk about those bases, each side is kind of complementary. Maybe you remember complementary from art when they talk about what the complementary color is for red. And in the case of this image, it says that it's green. Don't trust me on that. But it's always, if you have one, you know what the other one will be as well. If it's this one, it's going to be that one there. It's always going to be kind of opposite to it. Or maybe in math, the complementary angle for 60 degrees is 30 degrees. Collectively, they add up to 90. It basically means when you have one, you know what the other one is always going to be. In the case of DNA, whenever you have A, that has to be paired opposite of a T. Wherever you have a C, that must be paired opposite of a G. So the base pairing rules, and you absolutely 100% need to know this, A always goes with T, C always goes with G. Here's what a molecule of DNA looks like, and I would encourage you guys to draw this perhaps on the previous side or elsewhere in your notes. Here I have a phosphate, a sugar, deoxyribose, and the base, and collectively you should know that these are called a nucleotide. Now, DNA, as I said, is a double-stranded molecule, the twisted ladder. So I have opposite of this C, this is cytosine, it has to be paired with a G. Now, it's not an accident that this is upside down. DNA, actually, it's called anti-parallel. All you need to know is that they're still pairing up, it's just that the other side is relative to it, kind of upside down. Don't, don't panic about that. In between that C and the G, as I mentioned, there is a hydrogen bond. Just like in water, that very weak bond holds those two together. I'm going to put another uh, nucleotide up there, that's going to be an A for an adenine. A always pairs with T. So in this case, they form a hydrogen bond. Here's just another one. I have a G that is going to pair with, say it with me now, C. You didn't, you didn't say it, did you? But the whole thing goes on like this. So where I have A, C, G on the left side, that's going to pair with T, G, C. Ignore the fact that they're upside down. It's still A with T, C with G, and G with C. Now I want to show you guys how DNA replicates because that's a very important function of it. Here we have zoomed out a little bit on the DNA molecule. You can see it a little bit better. I've uh, flipped these up, or right side up just for clarity. They're still upside down. This is just so we can understand it a little bit better. Now, uh, enzymes are very, very important with DNA replication. You absolutely need some of them. And the first one to come through is an enzyme called helicase. And if you just saw right there, helicase shot down through there and unzipped the DNA. That was an amazing animation that it took me a long time to do, so I'm going to show you guys that again. Helicase came down and unzipped the DNA. It broke those hydrogen bonds and took that one strand and separated it. The other strand's off doing its own thing. More on that in a second. And then we have another enzyme come in called DNA polymerase. Again, it's an enzyme. It ends ASE. DNA polymerase is going to come in, and it's the one that actually does those base pairing rules, A with T, C with G. So in the case right here, I have A. That is going to pair opposite. Say it with me now. T. I know you didn't say it. It's okay. I not that broken up about it. DNA polymerase is going to move on down to the next one. It's got a C, so it's going to pair with a G. So DNA polymerase's job is really to add nucleotides to so that open strand there. It's going to move on down. G is going to pair with C. A will pair with T. T will pair with A. T with A. A with T. C with G. And finally, A with T. So just like before at the very beginning I had the strand and it was essentially built piece by piece added back on by those two enzymes DNA helicase which unzipped it and allowed it to separate into two strands and the other one's kind of off over there and then DNA polymerase added those nu nucleotides one at a time. So here is my strand just kind of a, to recap DNA helicase unzipped it and then DNA polymerase came and made copies. And you'll notice that I had two 
DNA polymerase is there. One to add free nucleotides to here, one to add free nucleotides to there. One more time, because, you know, amazing animations that we need to see. DNA helicase unzipped it, and DNA polymerase added that. So where I had one strand, it's now been duplicated, and I have two absolutely identical strands. So, just to kind of write down what we saw, DNA replication is accomplished by two enzymes, at least, just simplifying it. The DNA helicase came on and unzipped the DNA, and DNA polymerase was the one that came along and attached the complementary nucleotide to create a new DNA chain. So, we've now talked about DNA, what it looks like, how it's built, and how it replicates. You absolutely need to know all that stuff. I'd say feel free to go back, look at those diagrams again. I've made them as clear and clean as possible. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey, sorry, just want to add in uh, two more quick things. Uh, if you're looking for a really good interactive 3D model of DNA, please look at the uh, description underneath. I'm going to have the link to this web page here. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's actually, you can just click and drag and move it around. Uh, I think it's kind of neat. You get a really, really good sense of what it actually looks like. It will let you zoom in on different parts right here. There's the backbone, as I've mentioned multiple times, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. There's the bases on the inside. Obviously, they don't look like an A, T, C, or G, but they are actually there. And then if I zoomed in enough, I would see right in the middle those hydrogen bonds. Now, there's also different ways that you can look at it. You look at a space-filling model. This is probably more accurate to what it's like inside your body. Thick, where you can kind of make out the stuff a little bit better, or uh, thin, which you can see right here. What's kind of neat is you can zoom in and see an adenine and a thymine, so I'm just going to look at a single base pair there. So this is a base pair of two nucleotides. That's an adenine on the left and a thymine on the right. Uh, there's the phosphate and sugar backbone on either side. There's the bases, that's adenine, that's the thymine, and there's the hydrogen bonds that connect them. I'm going to go back and look at the DNA now, and I'm also going to look at a G, which is of course going to be paired up with a C. So you'll see that these are slightly different. Again, this website is below. I'd encourage you to go there. You get a really good feeling for it. Uh, in this case right here, that is the guanine right here. That is the cytosine, phosphate and sugar backbone, bases, and hydrogen bonds. Note that this one has three. And sorry for the abrupt jump right there. One other thing I want to show you, this website is also listed uh, in the description below. This is just basically how DNA replicates and see A with T. I like this one because it shows that there are different shapes and of course A can only pair with T. C can only pair with G. You couldn't have C opposite of a C or an A or a T. It just wouldn't fit. Now, obviously there are some enzymes here that we did not talk about. The only ones that I asked you guys to focus on were helicase and polymerase. There's more that goes on. I'm simplifying it. Now, you can go through this. Uh, if you click on this, it will take you through it step by step by step. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the whole thing. Here I start with two strands of DNA. And lots of little stuff is going on. You don't need to know all those little things. If you go to school for biology, you definitely will. But in the end, the important part to note is that I started with one strand of DNA and I end with two. And they are absolutely identical down to the letter. Feel free to pause this and double check that if you don't believe me. But the main enzymes that were involved for our purpose were helicase, which unzips the DNA, and polymerase, which adds in those free nucleotides. That's it. I'm done now. I promise. I hope.